Repsion, Calvin Gara, Madam, and Julia Love. They are all involved with Onision, and today we are going to touch on it all. My name is Rag Reynolds, and welcome back to Medium Rare. It has been quite a while since I've actually dived into any Onision related drama. So today we're talking about four subjects that are kind of connected, and those four, in no particular order, are the subjects of Repsion vs. Onision, Calvin Gara vs. Onision. Madam vs. Onision, and Onision's new Patreon account for his doll, Julia Love. And you know, I think I'm just going to start with the weirdest one out of all these, just so I can get past it and not have to talk about it again. And it's going to be the Julia Love thing. You know, Julia Love, he set up, he, this character appeared in Onision's videos called Julia. There were some disturbing images that came from that, and okay, whatever, he's doing this as a comedy sketch. Then he made a Patreon for this doll, which was strange, especially when you look at the tiers here and like for $5 you're gonna get topless pictures. But even stranger was that when I uh, done some research on this and about Julia Love, I found that apparently Julia was Greg's first kiss. He also had his first sexual experience with her. Greg was 11, Julia was 15. This would have been in 1997. Wow, the year I was born. Greg spoke about his experiences with Julia several times over the years. In 2018, Greg named and modeled a character in his third book, Reaper's Creek, after Julia and wrote about their sexual experiences. This caused some controversy due to their ages. In 2019, Greg bought a love doll to sell nude photos and videos of and named her Julia Love. So it was weird enough in the first place that he bought this doll, gave it a name, so it's called Julia. Then he made it a Patreon. He's selling nude images of it from his from the Patreon. And now I find out that the doll is named after an ex he had when he was 11 and this woman was 15. And there's just something really disturbing about that. Onision, here's some free advice for you. Next time you want to get a doll like this or do anything like this, Make up a new name, okay? Why do you have to make it so weird? I mean, it's weird enough having the doll and doing what you're doing, but it's harmless having it on Patreon and doing this in the videos. But if you gave it a different name, then at least there isn't really much to criticize other than calling it weird. But when you start naming it after someone from your past, especially when it's someone with this really weird age difference with this relationship, there's, there's something really messed up about that. And hey, I'm not hating on anyone who would buy a doll and give it a name, okay? I have a son, and his name is Ryan Jr. Anyway, moving on from the strange thing that is Julia Love. Now, I must ask you to excuse the drop in quality of the rest of this video. It's, it's certainly watchable, but my camera decided to be an absolute pain in my backside and it decided to stop properly focusing on my face and I didn't realize until like 40 minutes later when I had finished recording and got into editing. So please excuse that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Calvin Gara versus Onision and in relation to that we are also talking about Repsion versus Onision. So I'm sure everyone knows by now but for those who don't, Mr. Repsion or Repsion is a YouTuber with almost 700,000 subscribers who has been making videos on Onision for a very long time. Repsion is one of the most notable people to have ever had conflict with Onision. In fact, Onision goes as far as to call Mr. Repsion a harasser and a stalker. And that all came about because years and years ago when Onision first got together with his now wife, Lainey Bot, at the time Repsion actually contacted Lainey Bot's parents to warn them about Onision. And since then, Repsion has apologized for his past actions and has said that he would not do that now and that he regrets doing that. Anyway, Onision uses this over and over again as an example of Repsion's character and to say that Repsion 
is a harasser and a stalker. I will let you all make your own minds up as to what you think about that. Anyway, Calvin Gara in the last half year has made numerous videos about Onision and also about Onision in relation to transgender issues. The main issues seem to come about when Calvin Gara made a video responding to Onision and referred to his wife Lainibot as his wife and kept calling her a she, whereas Onision and Lainibot both have been referring to Lainey recently as a he and as Onision's husband rather than wife. They claim that Lainey is transgender. And that topic in itself has been a subject that has been highly debated, highly controversial. A lot of people saying that Lainey isn't transgender and is in fact just a trans trender. But we're not getting into that in this video. Anyway, Onision made the claim that Lainey Bot was crying over this and was upset that Calvin had misgendered them. Onision then tried to say that Calvin was being a hypocrite and was minimizing the problems that trans people face by misgendering his husband. And Onision made the point of asking how Calvin would feel if he was to start referring to Calvin as a girl, because Calvin, if you didn't know, is trans himself. Calvin is female to male transgender. Anyway, all of this continued and went on and on until eventually Calvin ended up making a 47 minute video about Onision titled Exposing Onision's Blatant Transphobia. And in this video he uses lots of evidence of things that he believes make Onision very transphobic and not an ally to trans people at all. Calvin also followed up a bit more recently, three weeks ago, with a video titled Onision has reached a new level of transphobia. Anyway, the back and forth continued, went on and on. Calvin was even issuing challenges to Onision about some sort of debate, saying that if they did debate, he would destroy Onision and everyone knows that. And then we hear from Repsion. So Repsion puts out a 25 minute video titled Onision's Secret Podcast. And in this video, Repsion is responding to clips from Onision's podcast. Now Onision's podcast is something that is only available on his Patreon. And at the present time, to access this podcast, you have to pledge $4 a month. So that's $4 per person to hear Onision's podcast. Now in Repsion's video, he basically just plays parts of this podcast where Onision is talking about Repsion and Repsion responds and tries to basically give his side or debunk what Onision is saying. Now Onision obviously wasn't very happy about this and he sent an email to Mr. Repsion about this and he was claiming that Repsion was essentially violating fair use and that his video was distributing content that hadn't been paid for. It was content that someone had leaked out there. So Onision released a minute long video called Calvin Gara could face jail time. And in this video, Onision broke down some emails between himself and Repsion, and he also alluded to the fact that he believed that Calvin Gara was the one who leaked Onision's Patreon paid content. Indicating that the user Calvin Gara released the paid only Patreon content. You click on this link and you scroll up. It says, let's just say, those took up a ton of my Google drive space. At some point, Onision also released a video called You're Destroying My Life, where for about a minute he has a whole rant about how people stealing his content and harassing him and whatever else is destroying his life and his career. Now for me, I can understand where Onision's coming from to an extent. Like if people are taking his content from Patreon and are just releasing it and distributing it to people, that is piracy. That is illegal. They are causing him damages. And I know that has happened to him in the past. For example, Real Stream News at one point released lots of Onision's Patreon stuff just in full length. And from what I'm seeing here as well, it seems that Calvin has released a lot of different things individually. So it seems that Calvin or Real Stream News in the past have actually done something wrong by leaking this stuff. However, as far as Repsion goes, I do not believe that Repsion is violating fair use at all. Repsion is taking clips of things that have been said and he is then breaking it down. It is not illegal, it is not a violation of copyright to take something that normally has to be paid for and to then criticize it. For example, when people make videos on YouTube about movies, they show a clip of a movie and they'll talk about it, they'll break it down, that sort of thing. It's not illegal for them to do that. But how do you access the movie? Well, 
you're supposed to pay for it. The only way to access it is to pay for it. It's the same if you were to take a Netflix show and you're showing clips from that to talk about those. The only way to access a Netflix show is to pay for a Netflix subscription. But that doesn't mean that using these clips violates copyright. Fair use is a thing, and I do believe that Repsion stayed true to fair use, regardless of whatever else anyone wants to think about him. But I do think Onision is a bit in the right with this whole copyright and Patreon stolen stuff when it comes to between him and Calvin Garrett. Now his video was titled Calvin Garrett Could Face Jail Time. Now I'm not so sure it's quite that severe. I'm not sure uh, if that's true or not. I'm, I'm no expert on legal matters, so I can't really comment. And Onision in his video also tried to say that, oh, Repsion's video got 100,000 views. It's 200,000 now, but at the time 100,000 views. And he said, my podcast is $4 a person to access. So basically Onision was alluding to the fact that Repsion screwed him out of $400,000 of revenue. But that's ridiculous because obviously out of those 100,000 people, they were never going to pay for Onision's Patreon. So I think it's silly for Onision to imply that. Although the thing he's going to do here is say, well, you can't prove that. And we can't prove that. And it's kind of just arguing about nothing here because there's no, there's no real facts at either side. It's just speculation, I suppose. But he can try and argue that this was money that he lost out on, even though it sounds ridiculous. And now moving on from that, the thing I wanted to talk about most in this video is between Madam and Onision. Now, Madam is a very small YouTube creator with only 45 thousand subscribers makes commentary style videos. Now she had made a couple of videos about Onision and Onision had hit them with copyright strikes as Onision has been doing to pretty much everyone on the platform as of late who is making videos criticizing him. So Madam tried to fight these claims but hasn't had much luck. One of her videos was even stricken and once she had filed a counterclaim and Onision didn't supply a court order, the video went back up only for Onision to strike the exact same video a second time. Anyway, she got fed up with all of this and decided that she wanted to sue Onision. So she made a video six minutes long talking about how she wanted to sue Onision. However, there she was, she spoke to people about copyright law and all that sort of stuff, and it was gonna cost maybe a hundred grand. So she thought it was very unrealistic and it was never going to happen. Instead, she encouraged people just to spread awareness and tag lots of bigger creators. But then a week or so later, she uploaded another video called I Paid For Onision's Patreon. And obviously that video had a lot of that sort of thing in it. She's reviewing his Patreon, but near the start, she talks about suing Onision again. And she says that she discovered what she can actually do is she can sue Onision in small claims. It doesn't have to be this huge copyright lawsuit for a hundred grand. Instead, she can do it much cheaper in small claims. She said she's not gonna have a lawyer with her in court and it'll only be around a hundred dollars in court fees to do this. The main expense is actually flying from her state of Florida over to Washington and then back and then obviously accommodation if she's there and travel and that sort of thing. So she is now encouraging people to donate her money via her Patreon to help support her so she can make that trip and sue Onision, but she says even if she doesn't get the support, she will pull the money together and she will be suing Onision. And now I want to talk about, not specifically about Madam, because I think it's a great thing what she's doing here. I think it, it sets a very good precedent uh, if she can actually sue Onision and get something done here. I think regardless of what anyone thinks of Onision, regardless of if you're somehow a fan and you've got to this point in the video, or if you're someone who really doesn't like him, I think everyone should be able to come together and agree that what he is doing with the copyright system here on this platform is despicable. I cannot support anyone who abuses the copyright system in such a way to silence people that they disagree with or to take down videos that they just don't like. I've had a whole thing about this with real stream news just very recently and for the last sort of year. I've, I've had a huge deal with him over this and I've got just as big of an issue with Onision about this even though Onision hasn't done it to me whereas Real Stream News did do it to me but I still feel very strongly about this and I see this happening with loads of other creators lots of other bigger creators are silencing small YouTubers some big YouTubers are being silenced as well and this isn't just people having their videos automatically matched to the content ID system this is often big YouTubers going in and purposely filing a copyright strike 
just to shut someone's video down so that this narrative can be more under their control. Or even if it's not about changing the narrative or molding it the way they want, it, it's often even just about, it's a power move. It's like, I really don't like this person, I don't like what they're saying, so I'm going to take away a bit of their revenue by claiming their video, or I'm going to stop them being able to reach more people, I'm going to impact their channel in a negative way. So I really hope this all comes together and that Madam gets this done. On July 3rd, she posted to her Twitter saying, I already mailed it, now I have to wait for a date, we'll keep people updated when I go to Washington, and she attached this video. Wow, the paper's a little wrinkly, how unprofessional of me, but um, this is me from the past, hello, and if you're watching this, it means I've already filled this out and sent it to Greg's County, proof that I actually am fucking suing him in small claims, I don't know why people think I'm not, I, uh, I fucking am, so, yeah. So it's an exciting situation, and I can't wait to see what comes of it, because it seems like someone is finally suing Onision. People have spoken about suing Onision for years. For years people have wanted to take Onision to court, but it has never happened. So I'm excited to see it finally happen and I'm excited to see if anything actually comes of it. The whole copyright thing, is, as I already just said, it's horrible. The whole state of YouTube and how YouTube isn't even doing anything about it, it's, it's terrible. I understand the copyright system and the thing, I understand that the copyright system is designed to help protect creators and protect them from people uh, violating their copyright and it's all about protecting creators. But the system is just so flawed. It's there with good intentions but it's so flawed that it's so easy for people to abuse. I just think it's ridiculous when you see guys like when you see on or as I mentioned earlier, real stream news, who go around flagging videos falsely non-stop. And when you do put out a claim, it specifically says, I accept that making false copyright strikes could result in the termination of my channel. And you have to say you agree to that. So I find it strange and concerning that even though these two individuals I just mentioned have been all over the platform, copyright striking videos left, right and centre, all of these strikes being reversed because they're clearly false, yet their channels still exist. It makes YouTube's copyright system look like an absolute joke. And it doesn't help that you get so many creators who are on Twitter, for example, tagging at Team YouTube or YouTube creators trying to get someone's attention and no one's doing anything about it. No one's even giving a word about what's going on. And it's, it's just very disheartening and it's very concerning. Either way, as I keep saying, I'm just excited to see what comes of all this. I feel like this video has been a bit of a, a mess. I've been ranting about a few different subjects and I feel maybe none of them were that coherent. I won't really know until I edit this. But just sitting here I feel like I've been a bit rambly. But oh well, I suppose you'll just have to deal with it. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments down below and let me know if there's anything specific that you'd like to see from me in the future. And until next time, my name is Rag Reynolds, this was Medium Rare, and you're welcome, society.